Welcome back to Dum Dums and Dragons, where improvisers who've never roleplayed before journey into the world of Dungeons and Dragons. I am the Great Wizard Bukake, your host. Our heroes are entering the palace in Selgot. Gartok gave the speech that got them welcomed inside. Butthole learned what he could about the zombies and their processes, and Quinny realized the nobles in town were begging to be robbed. But will our heroes be able to defeat the zombies threatening the town? Find out next on Dom Doms and Dragons. Dum Dums, you have arrived in Selgot after a long and storied adventure involving brothers named Ted, some some river shenanigans, uh, <laughs> meeting uh, uh, all manner of, of, of fun and, and wild characters along the way. But you've now arrived in the, the formerly bustling port and trade center of Selgant in Sembia on a mission to save Asgard from the, the wrath of... Uh, Primrose, Everhart, and the uh, assembled uh, people here waiting to see what kind of nation you're going to be. In order to do that, you need a neighbor to vouch for you, as as is so often the way. And thus, uh, on the behest of Kiran Bashkara, the envoy to, from Sembia, you have set out to Selgond, where there are some undead just doing processes that we have yet to, <laughs> to truly uh, unravel and, and sort yeah. out. Having arrived, uh, crossing into the city uh, over the high bridge. Uh, you have been brought through town by uh, infantryman in turn guy, uh, Jimbo Jimothy, uh, who has now handed you off uh, to the comptroller of Salgant, uh, one Balarvin Hashmir, uh, who is currently leading you into uh, the palace in order to make your... Uh, Greetings to uh, Thamelon Uskvarn the third, and figure out what the fuck is happening with these zombies. So, you're being led through by this uh, again, sort of Paul Giamatti type uh, controller Hashmir, uh, who is just making kind of small adjustments to everything as 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 you go. He's like directing staff around. Uh, this feels very much more like a busy town hall. Uh, or mayor's office than it does like a palace, at least this floor. Just people west winging all over the place with, you know, clipboards and paper uh, going for for walks. Uh, <laughs> and uh, he just kind of uh, is wringing his hands a little bit. And he, he turns to you, uh, Butthole, and says, Oh, listen, I'm sorry. I really shouldn't have opened with the money thing. And that's probably not your problem. But uh, let's just say times are a little tougher here than we're used to. So I'm just getting a little bit desperate. Uh, but uh, of course that was far too forward of me. Uh, you have my apologies on behalf of the office of the comptroller. Uh, many, many apologies. Oh, no problem. I totally understand. You know, I'm sure comptroller is a tough gig. Uh, you wouldn't believe, but thank you. Thank you. I'm glad someone understands the complexity. I'm sorry. Of this I business. don't understand. And what is a comptroller? And he just, he, he does a, a, a full scuffle. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you all right? Yeah, it's a, no one knows. No one knows. No one knows what it is. Uh, so you don't huh? know your job no, description? No, I know what This isn't a judgment, is. by the way. Yeah, I'm, I, I, I'm very curious about how yeah. cell god works. I thought I knew what a comptroller was, but now I'm not sure because nobody else is sure. Uh, Do you, you comptroll saying... money? <laughs> Can you roll me a persuasion check? <laughs> just me. <laughs> 18. 18. So inspirational. Uh, he he, kind of just like sighs through his teeth and goes, I wish I had strong fingers on the purse strings, but no, the role of comptroller was invented by uh, the Uskverin II uh, once the Uskverins Ooh. decided to spend more time uh, hunting and uh, enjoying the fruits of their labor than doing the labor. Uh, I understand he heard the term from a sailor from some other city and thought it sounded neat. So I'm some kind of undermare uh, with this fancy title that no one has bothered to ask me about in years, and I kind of thought I was getting away with it, but clearly you've seen right through me. So no, I comp troll very little. Uh, other than trying to just manage the chaos of this place and occasionally let uh, his lord governorship make a decision so he feels involved. So you're saying you effectively run the city? And well, babysit? Well, I, uh, yeah, I guess that is what I'm saying. A little bit. Well, that sounds like a comptroller is a very important job. Yeah, so I guess quick question for you then. Uh, 
we obviously want to do a good job. We want to help you. We want to help this this place. And we also want to get basically a letter of approval we can take back to Cormier to be like, these guys aren't psychos. So it sounds like you're the letter writing type. Uh, what do we need to do to make that work? And what do we need to do to make your, I guess, I'm going to use the term boss because I don't understand how any of this works, want to sign it? Because it sounds like he may be a little bit mercurial and maybe you got some more definitive answers. I, I would never go so far as to say he's mercurial. I heard that outside. Well, who am I to argue with the wind? Uh, yeah, <laughs> you would need his approval in order to uh, get any proper writ, uh, as you will not be surprised to know no one particularly respects the word of a comptroller rather than a high lord governor. But if you're able to deal with this undead problem, uh, that would go a long way. Uh, you may have heard of our... Uh, it looks at the two guards who are walking with him. He goes, ah, oh, fuck it, they know. You may have heard of our payroll issues uh, going on. Trade hasn't exactly been booming. We're starting to see foot traffic come in again. But there's only so much you can carry on your back or a cart as opposed to bringing in, in the load, the, the bringing in, in the cargo bay of a ship. Mm, you know? That's true. Rick Slick only had so many canoes. Yeah. Rick Slick... Yeah, he owns he's, the canoes. He's a canoe man. Yeah, he uh, rents he, them. On he's the now river. a horseman, too. And he just calls over someone. He's like, have we issued a business license to a Rick Slick? And they're like, well, I'll no, 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 no sir. I, I, and they're like looking through their things. He says, Do you say this guy's operating within the walls of Selgon? No. no. He's in the Daylands. Oh, fuck. Everybody shoves the guy out of the way. He's like, fucking that. Okay, all right. Well, that's fine. He can run his little business on the side. I don't think we need to get involved in such matters. But it seems like you got bigger stuff going on. We do. We do. We got, well, they're not that big, but they are a real problem. These fucking zombies, you know? There was one thing when they were trying to eat all the flesh of the living and speaking with the Lich Lord's voice. That was bad. Oh. But this whole new process thing, uh, it's worse? a whole other issue. Not worse, no, but not inconvenient worse. in a very different way. I see. When okay. did their processes start, if I may ask? That's a good question. Yeah. Um, right around the time all the, the rest of the undead uh, turned to ash and dropped. You know, people were celebrating in the streets. We heard word from elsewhere saying, hey, congratulations. And we kind of went, what are you talking about? Because we still had a lot of fucking zombies wandering Ooh. around. And they keep popping out of places we didn't expect. They're just there. They're in all sorts of nooks and crevices, but they're fucking weird because they don't they don't try and bite you or, or eat your flesh. But if you try and take them out of what they're doing, they just blow up. Okay, so like, obviously the surf zombies are a problem because they're a real problem. They're really blocking about the boats zombies. that you talked about. Like the in town zombies that like go to a bar. Is that an equivalent level problem? Like, do do we need to take this to zero, or is there like a priority? Taking list? it to zero would be ideal because a lot of our traffic is around. Uh, selling Salgant as a wonderful place for architectural wonders and temples. But when there's zombies in the fucking temple, you can't just have people going in. We have the same play running now for weeks. Everyone is really tired of it, and the actors are exhausted. We're only keeping them awake with drugs at this point. Is that because the zombies blow up if you do a different play? Yes. No. Oh. Yeah, and there's a line, mm. there's a big long queue of zombies to replace those exploding zombies. That's, and they yeah. go completely ape shit on you if you try and move one of them. Early on, oh, before exploding, the Silver Ravens uh, sent a, a unit in to just move. There's a, a, a very famous restaurant here, very, very good beef stew. Uh, and uh, Silver Lion? Uh, you've heard of it. All yeah, right. Yeah. Well, don't get your hopes up because there's there's an zombies. undead gourmand yeah. in there who's just sitting there demanding oh. more stew. He's eating into all as much stew as they can make. Oh, so his it process is to eat? Constantly. Huh. Just orders the same thing over and over and over. And we thought this was very silly. We thought we could handle this. So we sent in a unit of uh, the uh, Silver Ravens. They went in, tried to pick them up. Zombies started screaming. And all of a sudden... Fuckers just came out of the woodwork and rushed into his aid. When they put him back down, the zombies just left. They just walked back to wherever they were stationed. Guards tried to pick up one of those zombies. All the star zombies start screaming. All the other zombies rush to their aid. Well, one continues to order food. We have no other way to describe it than a fucking process because they just seem to have a series of things they're doing. And if we interfere with that process, then they, they go all splat angry on us. Okay, so that's the what. Yeah, you know, you're the comptroller. So, what's the 
what's the why or the theories on it? You know, you got your, this is a big city. I'm sure you got your wizards, your clerics, your scholars trying to explain why this is happening. We yeah, would. is it happening outside of Selgod in other places of Sembia? Not that we've heard of. It seems to be localized mm. purely to here. And to your question, uh, Mr. Minister of Culture, no, we don't have wizards and big hats and other things working on it because we don't have any fucking money to pay them right now. Jeez. So we've had to put everyone on a little bit of a, we've, we've had to put people on hiatus, forced hiatus. You know, we got people on sabbatical. We've given a lot of people vacations, just hoping they won't notice that there's no payroll yet. Because until trade is restored, we're kind of fucked. Okay, so we got to check out this zombie thing. Uh, let's go do this formal hello and get oh, that over with. And then we can in. start, go do some tests on... I think the zombie at the restaurant seems like the one we could figure out because I want to find out what happens if we like give him a plate of rocks or something. It sounds like he's going to explode, but yeah. Yeah, I want to find out if that's true. Okay. Maybe he talks. I don't know. Can you take us to see your boss and then uh, we'll get back to work? Yeah, we can go see him. Uh, that said, you're, you're going to need to get uh, patted down, I think, before you go in. Looks like uh, you might be carrying some weapons on you. And I uh, mean, I do have this hammer in my hand and the shield with the spikes it, on it that, and a wolf. Uh, look, I didn't want to be rude and point yeah, it out. Yeah, my but... sword, my chair itself is kind of a weapon, but I kind of need it to move around. So Look, that's fine. Just talk to Proximus about it. And All right. Once, once we, we've cleared it, once you're cleared for entry with him, then we can go uh, uh, talk to uh, the Lord High Governor. So he, he takes you down a couple of hallways to a security office. And you see a massive um, emblazoned uh, silver raven over the door. Um, and it, this very much seems like the almost a rental office within kind of this this municipal center. Um, and uh, behind the desk inside, uh, there is a, a minotaur wearing a uh, like basically like a battlefield coat, like a, you know, like a, a, a military long coat. Um, he's got, uh, one arm pinned up, um, uh, where he's, he's missing an arm. So he's got kind of one sleeve pinned up. Mm. Um, and in the other hand, he is, uh, wielding a quill. Uh, and you can see he's concentrating very hard. He's like, glaring at the page as he writes kind of shakily with, uh, with the quill. Uh, and the room is surrounded by like file folders as well as, uh, sketches and like, you, you know, when you go to a restaurant or something and they just have like this one best restaurant in town, 2022 or whatever. It's like just covered in commendations for the, the silver Ravens. Um, and there's pictures of, you know, like victories and, and other such things. Uh, and you can tell this is the field office. So basically the, the official liaison for this mercenary army within, uh, the walls. So as you uh, walk up, uh, Smithar just like sn you know snuffles out um, uh, in in rage, and uh, as as you come in, he says, uh, "Can you comp troll something that's easier to write with in one's off hand, little man?" And uh, Hashmir goes, um, "No." <laughs> Proximus just narrows his his bovine eyes and says, "Then what good are you?" And Hashmir looks to all of you and says, this is the fucking guy. Uh, he says, hey, um, <clears throat> uh, Commander, uh, we've got some folks here who need to go see the big man. So can you do your thing and then let them let them pass? Uh, and at this point, uh, the Minotaur just like ceases to pay attention to the comp troll at all, looks at the three of you and rises to his full height. And he dwarfs this room like he is. He's very, very big in a very small room. Uh, and uh, he looks <laughs> again, like sword, chair. <laughs> Shady guy with a cloak, big guy with a hammer and a shield. Yeah, butthole and it's wolf. Butthole just looks to Gartok. It's time for a formal introduction. Gartok, please. Uh, Commander Proximus, uh, it is a pleasure to meet you. Uh, may I please introduce His Majesty King Butthole of Asgard, formerly known as Aka, here to help with the exploding zombie situation. And he. Like at the mention of uh, a car, his like hand drops, uh, drops to his belt. Uh, but you can see he's actually reaching for the wrong side, uh, and that he clearly is is meant to like he's carried mm. his weapon. He would draw from his left hip, so he reaches for for his right. He's reaching across. He's reaching, himself. He, no, he's reaching to the left as though to draw because that's where his sword would normally uh. be. But now it's on his other side, uh. and so he like reaches down, notices it isn't there. Like has one of those like frustrated moments and then reaches crossbody, um, and he says, "Wait, uh, formerly known as a car, and you're here to help with the zombies." Yes, I will let my Majesty speak now. I. Uh, <laughs> it's a pleasure to meet you, Your Highness. I'm 
uh, butthole farts. It's a pleasure to be here. We were invited by an envoy to help you deal with this whole weird zombie process thing so that we can get that solved for you because we're here to make friends. We deposed the previous leadership. We're turning Asgard around. It's becoming a peacekeeping nation with an interest in making some allies, helping with shipping. We've disbanded the army in a traditional sense. <laughs> but it's getting wider. <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> We're here because we're hoping to firm up an alliance and help you with the issues going on with Selgan, because it sounds like, he looks around to make sure there's nobody else, but this is clearly the person in charge, sounds like there's some payroll problems that we got to get solved for everybody. Just big snort out of the nose, and he says, you say you've disbanded your army. Yes, other than a small token force of peacekeepers. So are you looking to employ one? Because as you say, we have some payroll issues. And immediately, like... The comptroller's like, no, 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 they're not, they're not here for that. You're not here for that. Not right now. We're, we, we have to rebuild a nation that was sort of being fueled by zombies. So we've become very good at eliminating zombies, and we're happy to bring that skill here to help you. And um, uh, the, uh, the commander, like, nods, and he goes to cross his arms, and again, it's just like that momentary deep frustration and he's, he lowers his, his left arm down to the table and says, if you have indeed dealt with the former rulers of Akar, that means we have you to thank for the death of the Lich Lord. Yes. Well, then, you are indeed welcome as a friend here in Selgaunt. And he, like, gestures to his arm and he says, they left me with this gift on their way out, as many of my troops have suffered under the heel of their zombie hordes. Well, maybe I can help you with that arm thing if that seems to be a problem. If you don't mind me taking a look. Um, and uh, he, he smiles and he says, I have received consultation on it, but as much as it inconveniences me these days, I take the loss of it as, as an important moment in my life and, and choose to instead live with it than to uh, gain either a, a replacement or... I had a wizard offer to regrow it. Um, yeah, that's what I was going to offer. Yeah. It is a kind offer, and were I on the battlefield, I would perhaps take you up on it. But no, my time on the battlefield has ended. Now, he like taps the desk, kind of like a little apprehensive. He says, now my new battlefield is made of oak, ink stains. Oh, cool. Okay. Uh, Follow-up question before we go into the next meeting. Uh, Comptroller, can you just uh, step outside for a second? Ah, uh, uh, well, no, I'm I'm very important. Proximus just like nods at him, and the two guards just each grabs a, an arm and just lifts him up and takes two steps back and closes the door. Great. I just had a quick question. I heard that there were silver ravens who had been patrolling in the sewers before all this stuff went down. Was that just like a general security thing, or was there stuff going on in the sewers that was a little bit questionable? Can you roll me? Hmm. What will this be? I think maybe persuasion at advantage. Sure. Ooh. Nat 20. Eee! Hell yeah. As I said, I owe you a lot. A nat 20's <laughs> worth. <laughs> you have brought, put an end to my enemies and have kept my, my soldiers somewhat safer than they would have been otherwise. So I can tell you that they, we do patrol these sewers regularly it seems that having a massive network of connected tunnels throughout the city is a how to put this uh real dumb idea if you aren't guarding it or patrolling it because all manner of ne'er-do-wells and thieves and rogues could make use of it several have in fact we have a local group the night knives a guild of some sort that are rather intent on fleecing all of these nobles for all that they're worth. Admittedly, and like Little Smirk looks around the room, but he, I think at this point he thinks you guys are kind of cool. He's like, admittedly, that is also what my troops and I do in the name of the general, but we, at least we put in an honest day's work for it. I'm all for taking the money from the rich, but there has to be some exchange of goods and services, and the night knives only steal. They provide no value. They are in some ways worse than the aristocracy, merely soaking up the money and not distributing it in any other way. But yes, they use the sewers from time to time to move 
amongst their ill-gotten gains. Also, nobles do not guard their privies particularly well. They are all rather embarrassed <laughs> about it. Yeah, yeah, that, oh. that makes sense. Uh, I guess follow-up question then, because now that I know you were legitimately uh, down there. 20's worth of follow-up question. <laughs> I mean, this one's not going to be... I, I don't want to push you too far. I feel like oh. we're new friends. I don't want to be too pushy. Like, we got to yep. learn to trust each other. But, like, if we need to get information about or from the Night Knives... Is there perhaps someone you're aware of who's like a low-level guy who's, let's just say, not the bravest that we might be able to, like, lean on to get information from about parts of the sewers you might not be familiar with in the legitimate sense? Um, and he, he nods and he says, we employ a group known as Night Carters here in mm -hmm. uh, Selgant. They are professional sanitation workers and would have the best sense of the underground tunnels if you're looking for someone perhaps to press not that of course you would take action as uh, foreign nationals and oh never but you know if you fell over on someone and happened to ask them a couple of questions who am i to stop you um the person you person i would recommend is a low-level cut purse known as uh, Raphael Stone, or Rafe, as he prefers to be called. He is uh, operates out of the docks primarily. He uh, purports to be a an apprentice shipwright. Uh, you will likely be able to find him uh, in either attempting to apprentice or observing at Anna Barver's luxury shipbuilding. Center the uh, Anna Barver is uh, an incredibly upstanding citizen in in, in Selgant and is not to be accidentally fallen upon for information. However, should you find this Rafe Stone, yeah, Rafe, uh, Rafe, maybe we ask some questions if need be. I'm not here to just like be a pain in the ass. We are merely speaking in hypotheticals. I like you. You're a cool guy. Thank you. I like you as well, and. You two seem fine. This one's rather quiet, but you I understand. Have to include me if you, if I'm, you know, it's okay. You can have your conversation. <laughs> He's a minister of culture. Yeah. Like, if you wanted to talk about paintings or whatever, no. he'd be your guy. That's, but like, yeah. this is not hey, these things. Do you have left-handed ledgers where you come from? I'm attempting to learn to write with this one, and I must say, it is rather a pain in the ass. I could probably mail you something. Excellent. Then, in that case, all three of you seem rather cool, as you say. Great. Great. So can we go talk to the Lord High Governor? We just want to get down to work. Yes. I would appreciate if you left your massive hammer spike. Are those dinosaur teeth? Yeah. Yeah. They're from a T-Rex. Oh, good eye. That's rad. Leave those. Leave the sword. You Do I have to hold you up by your ankle and shake the knives out of you, or are you okay putting them on the desk? <sighs> two hand crossbows, two daggers, a rapier, and... I think that's it. Right. The, uh, the magic sword. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> does not yeah. come out. He says, I'll, I'll politely ignore the magic that I assume at least two, possibly three of you have and whatever is hidden in that exquisite chair. But I must keep up appearances. So here you are. You can have these visitor badges. And he opens his desk. And he pulls out <laughs> badges that say like, they basically have like a little silver raven on them. Mm. And it's the equivalent of like, I got checked at security. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I hate to be a pain in the ass, but sometimes yeah, I have to do a little bit of it for political reasons. As a foreign king who's been invited here, it's a little awkward uh, for me to set down anything having been invited. I wouldn't do that to the whole lot. Lord High Governor, is that? Yep. Uh, it's like three words all in order. It gets, gets me. There's a lot of names in this place. But, like, I wouldn't uh, ask the Lord High Governor to empty his pockets if I had been invited. If, like, if I invited him to our castle. If he brought a sword, keep the sword. You bring a shield, keep the shield. You're, you're a king. Obviously, this is not a, a hostile scenario. Is this hostile and I need to put this weapon down? Is this how it's going to start or are we going to stay chill? He, like, tilts his head uh, a little bit and um, just, like, pulls a, a, a kerchief out of his uh, pocket and just, like, actually, like, polishes one horn uh, sort of <laughs> thoughtfully uh, and says, you raise some good points, your highness. I merely am attempting to smooth over your way to impress the Lord High Governor as a 
normal-sized human man. He is rather squishy and rather incapable of defending himself in any serious way. And so showing up armed will put him on edge. He is rather paranoid knowing how easy to kill he is. I don't think a falcon could kill any of you in a single strike, which means he's going to be a little touchy. You are welcome to take your weapons in if you see fit. I am happy to whether the tirade I will receive from him and likely the comptroller after. You know what? Why don't we split the difference? I'll tummy bag it. And he just pulls out the middle of his armor and puts his weapons into his bag of holding so that they're technically still on him, but not on display. It's, it's so funny. It's I, I blinked really hard just now. You had weapons and now you don't. It's very odd, but I'll assume you put them in in the box and that they're invisible. Oh, yeah, I must have done that, he says, taking hammers off of the wolf. <laughs> putting them into his tummy bag as well. Um, and he, uh, he nods, he says, fine, well, the Silver Ravens have been the protectors of Sembia and Selgon for some time. We just want to get back to business as usual. The legions deployed throughout Sembia are still active and being paid. It's only Selgon that is falling behind on payroll. The sooner this is all sorted, the sooner we can get back to work. But I will admit, you and the other bronze ravens we have deputized uh, you should also know i have no control over those folks and i nor do i want it they are not an official part of the silver raven legion we merely had to give them some designation so that the people of selgant would think that they are somehow sanctioned it is the equivalent of a plastic sheriff's badge pinned to a child is there someone who does control them some sort of bigger child no they are a tween, simply if you will or like a, a bully i guess in an uh, elementary school metaphor could be Gartok, what would it be like for you? What's your comparison? Uh, well, I suppose it would be, I mean, the tween thing, but they would have to have some sort of training in, like, first aid and emergency measures to take if something were to go wrong. Yeah, so like a nurse? Like yeah. a babysitter. A tween is oh, like babysitter. A, a tween, a, early lifeguard a nurse, training. a yeah. lifeguard. Well, we like, do. They did all the swimming levels, and then you start to do, like, lifeguard stuff. You know, we could probably just use the term course. lifeguard just kind of generically. Yeah. Maybe not a water thing, but just protecting people's lives. Is that oh, like, that's it, interesting, yeah. yes. If you would like to... Do you have a bronze lifeguard? We do... If you would like to speak to the lifeguard, it just I might believe. be good to know them. If these bronze ravens hassle us, we can. Well, I we, want to we be know clear. To this person to. doesn't control the bronze ravens. They are just literally a lifeguard. And you said you wanted a lifeguard. Uh, his name is not so normal, and not he, so he normal. works overseeing the surf lessons. Down so nobody the, controls. Them. They just kind of do whatever the they bronze, want. I'm as sorry. A I'm sorry. There are surf lessons happening for. <laughs> there were, but citizens. now there are zombies. So. I feel like oh, they may okay. have sent him on one of those uh, unpaid vacations that got talked about. Oh, he's down by the water. There's just no one to guard because there's zombies in the water and they certainly don't need lifeguarding. So he's just chilling? Probably. Un he's probably hanging. Like so <laughs> perhaps I should explain. It would seem the comptroller has not given you all the appropriate information. I learned what a comptroller is today. And I feel like he's maybe a bad one. You are correct okay. on both counts. It, it is a nonsense word and a nonsense man. <laughs> Oof. The Bronze Ravens are adventurers like yourselves without kingdoms or crowns who have come to the aid of uh, Sembia and Selgant. They are in search of exposure rather than payment. They are lower level adventurers seeking a cause. Mm. Several of them have been deputized as, he does air quotes with his one arm, as bronze ravens so that the populace will not how to put this freak out that a bunch of random vigilantes are now trying to do things but i figured i would rather have them get blown up by shrieking zombies than my own people particularly if we're not being paid so you will find bronze ravens throughout the city they answer directly to the high lord governor but really they're adventurers Faerun is filthy with them they don't have the discipline okay. of an armed unit. okay so what you're saying is like if we solve this problem odds are the bronze ravens are kind of going to have to go somewhere else. Yes, but yeah. they bronze will. ravens might try to stop us from solving this problem, so they can get the credit. Yeah, I mean let's, that implies a level of organization that I think isn't They're clear each, here. But like, oh, I'm saying like two of them. Oh yeah, sure, whatever. Yeah. Oh great. You if, may, if I can get the whatever from the king for killing those guys, well, no, that's super. I, I, don't. <laughs> did you say that out loud? <laughs> yeah, I need to know what's in your head. And what's out loud right now? Can you roll me a? Yeah, yeah. I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah. 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 Let's okay, save. Okay, so to be clear, no, we we don't need to kill them. What I'm just saying is, I I think we can handle two people if it's a problem. I'm All just right. thinking further ahead to like. Okay, bronze ravens have got to go for a walk. We've got a nation that needs more people to show up and be peacekeepers. We got some options. Yeah, but. 
we should also probably get diplomatic immunity officially from the High Lord Governor in the next room in case a Bronze Raven takes a swing at us and then yeah. we don't have to go to jail. Okay, Can you cool. give us a second badge? Only he can provide that. Okay. I do not rule here. I simply say that you aren't carrying weapons, wink. I'm sorry, I have a difficulty winking, so I would just say it so you're aware that I'm aware that you're aware. Honestly, I appreciate it. It was Excellent. way more clear than the visual winks. I never know what they mean. Yes, well, in a it's world... It's sometimes hard to distinguish between a wink and a twitch. And as someone who occasionally has flies flicking around my eyes, yes, I understand. It's mm -hmm. very frustrating. In any case... uh you will find one of the Bronze Ravens uh, palling about with Not-So-Normal. He is known as uh, The Dude and has made <laughs> it quite a life for himself down at the beach. Also a surfer, I assume. However did you guess. Mm. Okay, so we can talk to them if we need lifeguarding. Uh, all right, this is a thing that sometimes I just feel like it's the smartest thing to ask, which is like, is there something we should have asked you and we didn't? Hmm. <laughs> Bold choice, your highness. No, at this point, it is likely better to speak directly to the High Lord Governor. I will say, do take care dealing with these undead. My troops have seen a lot of action, and we fought the regular undead just fine, but these are something else. They are stronger and deadlier. I'm quite frankly happy they ran out of money because... I would just be losing troops day in, day out to this particular menace. Mm. Okay, well, we'll be careful. Yeah. Hey, what's uh, Oskvera in the third like? You know, what, what, is, what kind of stuff should we know we're about to talk to him? You know, you want to talk about smoothing things, having a smooth introduction, you know, not having weapons and stuff. How does he like his uh, visitors to carry themselves? He... Is a fair weather ruler, if I may say so. Oh, okay. The Uskvarans have been for some time oh. now. The earlier ones were destroyed by rival houses and then rose back up to prominence by buying and selling land, which to me is such an absurd concept for a way to gain power, but... Oh yeah, nobody likes real estate developers. Truly no. strange. In any case, after they reclaimed their seat they managed to gain control of the city and have been ruling now for a few generations being the third Thanlin Uskvaran to rule he is used to things being a certain way being comfortable being orderly the rise of the undead was not in the cards for him and he was not exactly the man you want at the helm of your ship in stormy waters our work was rather cut out for us um, as soldiers, but as a ruler, well, as you can see, with trade grinding to a halt, there was very little else happening here. The rich continued to kind of while away the days, and the working classes of the city just stood around hoping things would get back to normal soon. There wasn't a lot for them to do either. Truly, the night knives were the only ones to prosper during that time because there was plenty of rich shit to steal, but even they started to get caught because everyone was at home all the time. Hmm. So, he is not a bad man, but he is not a brave man, and he is not a particularly intelligent man. He loves to hunt. He loves that fucking appetizer that he has flying around oh. at all times. Oh, the bird. Yeah. Yes. Wait, he eats the bird? I would like to eat the bird. I hate that fucking oh, bird. Oh, I thought you meant appetizer from his perspective. No, you? That makes, no. I'm, he, apologies. He likes to hunt in the, uh, the, the hunting garden, but more than anything, he likes to dispatch honey lass to hunt in the hunting garden. And when honey lass comes back with a mouse or a vole, he is ever so happy as though he hunted it himself. So right, well, he's not a bad man. I have met bad men. I have served under bad men. He's not a bad man, but he's also not a particularly good man. He's just a man. Got he's, it. So he, he's not a kid, right? I just got to ask before we go. No, into no, oh, he's, okay. I mean, <laughs> well, hang on a second. We were talking earlier about like, how would you classify this person? And I would classify him as childlike. But oh, childlike. That's what I assume. But based on the hobbies, I was like, I really don't want to go in there and find out this guy's 10. He's 36. Like, okay, perfect. Nope, which that, I understand is adult-ish. That's adult. Human. For a human, it's yeah. adult it's, enough. Yeah. That's kind of where I'm living. Yeah, yes. that's, that's cool. Old enough to know better is perhaps the best way to put it. That That's clear. Okay. Well, I guess we'll go talk to uh, the Lord High Mouse Hunter and... Uh, We'll make a friend. 
Gartak, you got a friendly speech? You, you seem unsure. The I fact am. that you said nothing makes yeah. me nervous. My apologies. You're saving it, saving it for the FaceTime. You know that's yep. true. That's true. What I am most impressive about you, Gartok, is you don't say anything just to say something. You wait until it's going to have the strongest emotional impact. I've never been more confident that this is going to go well. And Butthole kicks open the door to the next room and yells, Hello, new friend! Introduction! <laughs> and he turns and points to Gartok. Uh, Gartok, you find yourself uh, wheeling up to um, a large, it's sort of a large circular room. It's not particularly deep, just mm -hmm. a, a large circular room with a throne made out of shipping crates, um, old Whoa. weathered shipping okay. crates uh, that have been uh, refashioned into, into a throne. That said, there's some plush fucking velvet cushion situations going on, mm. and it's clearly been retrofitted in a kind of awkward way to make it uh, very uh, comfortable uh, and plush. Uh, no one is in the seat, but the seat is is there. Um, there are windows open. You get that, that beautiful sea breeze coming in. And uh, around are uh, various tables set up with like writing implements, food, all that sort of stuff. It looks kind of like uh, there's like half fi finished paintings in one corner. It's just there are a lot of activities here. Mm. There's a lot of stuff that you could do to keep busy, but none of them seem completed. All of them seem half started and, and mm. kind of picked away at. Um, at the window is uh, a man uh, who is indeed not a child uh, wearing um, kind of like, uh, for lack of better term, uh, bougie hunting clothing. So mm. it's very much like he he's dressed kind of like you'd expect a ranger, except everything is like vaguely plush. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very much the performative glamping outfit okay. so like it has camo but the camo is like in the wrong colors for mm. anywhere it just has that vibe a um, lot of like leather straps uh, you know he's, he's got you know the side holsters with arrows in one he's got um, a bow nut strung across him but like hanging from a like a little backpack situation so mm. it's there like a video game character which is kind of attached to your back um, wearing a long uh, very well worn and this does look legitimately rugged um, forest green cloak um, that he's kind of got whooshed back. He's got just cascading brown hair. Um, bit of like a, if you can imagine, like a young square-jawed Steve Buscemi. Uh, mm -hmm. So still got a bit of that like Buscemi vibe, but if you had like a hero jaw mm -hmm. uh, okay. and kind of long, uh, luscious brown hair. And he's got one foot up on the windowsill. He's got his hand resting on his knee. Uh, and he's he's holding out um, a, a hand with a falcon ears gauntlet. Just says, to me, honey lass, to me. Uh, and you hear, and uh, the, the bird flaps in and flies beyond the glove and lands on his shoulder. And it kind of winces a little bit. It says, ha ha. Oh, yeah, the talons. Too deep. <laughs> Too deep, honey lass. <laughs> we shall work on it. Uh, and then clearly having heard Butthole boot open the door, he then does a, huh? Uh, <laughs> so he just goes, oh, new friends indeed. Please welcome, welcome. Uh, Gar talk. I understand you are to introduce, that is what your large friend said. Yeah, hit You it. are in the presence of the High Lord Governor of Selgard. Uh, Gartok just immediately bows very low and just says, My esteemed Lord High Governor. And uh, Honey Lass. And Lord Gov... Uh, honey Lass. And Lord <laughs> Falcon. Lord... My esteemed Lord Falcon, Honey, honey Lass, and Lord High Governor... Uh, Fabulon Uskver the Third, may I please present to you His Majesty King Butthole of Asgard, formerly known as Aka, responding to your summons, uh, uh, from Kiran Bashkara, uh, to deal with the problem of the exploding undead in their processes. Uh, his Royal Highness. Uh, he <laughs> looks at Quinny. Quinny. Takes a step to the side, uh, <laughs> revealing that he was obscuring physically about a third of Butthole standing behind him. <laughs> Honestly, he goes with it. He's into that level. Patrick says, oh, there you are. Your <laughs> yep, that's me. I'm King Butthole Farch, and I'm excited to also introduce you to Lord of the Wolves, Goblin Jr. And oh, Goblin Jr. One. steps forward um, and, like, gives, gives you, like, a quick... Okay, and then gives Quinia like I can't fucking believe this look, and then bows to this idiot, uh, and um, 
Uh, it just rises oh, and goes, rich. snarf, Jesus. snarf, which all of you who understand beast speech is like, yep. fucking bird. Uh, and no. Honey Lass just like tilts his little avian head at Goblin Jr. And B Butthole just looks up and goes, he says, it's a formal greeting to Honey Lass. So we're all here. He, <laughs> yeah. he knows that was a lie. Yeah. <laughs> if Honey Lass is in a check. If Honey Lass has anything to say, Quinny will also be able to hear that through Beast's speech. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Gar talk has speak with animals. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the deception is... 13. 13? All right. Uh, <laughs> and he, he looks down at Goblin Jr. and he says, Well, in that case, snareth, snareth to you as well. I am versed in the animal tongues, being a great hunter. As you can see, and he gestures to no trophies. <laughs> Not only can I see, I heard about it the whole way here. Ah. So, it's great to meet you. I understand you're having problems with zombies. Oh, and the processes, yes, quite. Exactly. So we're here to just shut those processes down and make things easy for you. We just wanted to confirm that uh, we could work with with or tell the bronze ravens that's the term right that what, ravens, what to yeah. do just in case they get in the way we don't want anybody to get hurt while we do our very powerful magics uh and that we get permission to like walk around the last thing we want to do is like open a door somewhere and get arrested like knowing i'm here as a king and these are my inspirational speaker and my Minister, Minister of, culture. of Culture. Yeah, I know your job. <laughs> Don't get uppity in front of the king. I just want to make sure we both remember that is my real job. Yep, absolutely. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that we're that's cool. Like, we've got diplomatic immunity for traveling to do this job for you because we'd like to help. Your Highness, I have a few questions first. I must understand what happens within my walls. Oh, yeah, go for it. Let's hear them. Why did not you bring a comptroller with you? A minister of culture seems an odd choice. Oh, my comptroller, is, the equivalent, is known as the Hand, and she's back running my nation. The Hand? What a silly term for it. No one's going to understand what that means. You should try comptroller. I'll think about it. Honestly, if I can understand it better, I might use it. Ah, yes. New to rule, I see. Well, uh, you mentioned a car. That was previously a real spooky place, full of <laughs> evil and nightmares. Correct. What is your intent with with Sembia? You, you've you responded, I honestly, to be blunt, uh, wasn't really sure Kieran was going to make it there okay, nor survive it. Uh, but it would seem that he has summoned you, and you're not dressed in spiky black nightmares, and neither of these fine people appear to be undead nightmares. So pray tell. What is this new Asgard? Yeah, we so we led the population in a revolt and civil war, unseating the evil people who had turned the entire world into an undead hellscape. Mm. And then we have taken over. I am currently ruling. We have disbanded the army, but maintained a small force of peacekeepers. We are here to make allies and friends. We'd like to be a trading center. Perhaps we could help you get your very profitable shipments uh, across the desert and probably through the mountains now that the wingnuts are afraid of us. Uh, we got a lot of ways that we could help each other, but we need to convince Cormier that uh, we're not the same spiky, murdery, for lack of a better term. Oh, man, no, that's assholes are good. Uh, what's what's bad? What's what's the opposite of an asshole? He says to Quinny. Quinny trying to like stamp down like the initial instinct reaction, and then try to just uh, dick dickheads. Yeah. So those they, they, we don't want them to think that we're still those spike wearing murderous dickheads. Yes, the opposite of the asshole. Exactly. Oh man. Ha ha. Ha ha. ha. This guy's pretty cool. Just cementing. <laughs> Cementing for Quinny, like he's just not built to rule, man. Just almost like kingship would not have sat with well with him. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it. You're pretty charming and you're a great hunter. This is not what I was expecting in this room, but you seem nice. We are full of surprises here in Selgaunt. That is one of the great allures of our beautiful city. But yes, trade across the desert would be tremendous as... Honestly, just knowing that uh, envoys won't get uh, uh, murdered and roasted alive if we send them to uh, Asgard is is a welcome improvement, I must say. And uh, thank you for doing us a solid by knocking out those awful liches. Ugh. I'm afraid we still feel the lingering presence of their blight 
from our town, but uh, I appreciate you're, you're here to help. So, yes, this all sounds right good to me. I was a little worried you were going to lead a rebellion here, but it sounds like you've disbanded your army, so no threat, I assume. No, no, I... The last thing I want, I'm trying to make sure we start zero wars. That's our goal. As as a nation, it has been like, I don't know, like three weeks with no wars, and I'd like to keep that streak running my whole life. Very good. I find war terribly troublesome. I feel the same way. See, Quinn, this is how there are reasonable rulers in this world, he says. You can learn from this minister of culture. The culture oh, man, of, of Selgant produces such fine thinkers as myself. Perhaps... I could dictate some memoirs to you that you could take back with you to your Asgard. We are short on original literature. <laughs> yes. Perhaps. Tremendous. Ooh. Tremendous. He checks his nose for bleeding. He's like, okay, no, I made it. <laughs> I'm not going to make you roll deception because that's close enough to not being alive. It's just a word. Uh, and he says, well, very good, very good. Well, um, yes, uh, uh, as it seems you are rather well informed, I assume my comptroller has done his job and told you some things, but there are some things only the Lord High Governor may know, such as the identities of the Bronze Ravens. You are not the only heroes to arrive seeking help, although you are the ones with the best titles, so that I respect greatly. But we've had all manner of heroes or adventurers show up looking to make a name for themselves. We can't all have countries or ministries or inspirational words. No, some of us need to earn it, like I myself have earned my <laughs> fortune by being born into it. So... They have arrived seeking uh, to assist, and I have dispatched them to some of the worst processes around the city. Rest assured you shouldn't encounter any resistance from them, because you will all be working for the same purpose. Me. So, they should aid you, or at least provide information. I must admit they have not been terribly effective in their roles, for if they were, I could just send you back with a how do you do, but they have not managed to deal with the undead menace. So, yes, you can find them uh, out and about. Uh, there are four currently active that are probably worth you, you knowing about. Okay. Uh, first and foremost, upon the coast, there is a sport here in Selgaunt, one of the greatest sports, aside from hunting, the world has ever seen, known as board riding on water, I think it's called. Okay. It brings in a lot of tourism, and unfortunately, the zombies have taken it up. Oh. Not great. So, uh, this means that none of our tourists can do their board on water riding, nor any large ships can come in, for the zombies will explode against the hull and sink them. We've had two rather large shipments go down in the bay. Hmm. Not great. Not great. And of course, pirates have figured out there's a bit of a log jam, so there is just a whole bunch of shit going on off the coast that I'd really like to stop. Okay. So, <clears throat> down there on the coast, I've dispatched one, the dude. He seemed oh, a rather okay. laid back, rather chill fellow. And when I mentioned this, he called it surfing, which I thought was a very funny term. But he seemed quite familiar with it and quite eager to go and see it for himself. Uh, rather okay. large fellow. Um, uh, seemed capable enough, and yet I still received no shipments. So I'm not sure what has become of him. He might be dead. Okay, so we'll check in on the dude down by the board riding on water yes, area. Yes, the coast. And then who else you got? So, uh, the, the dude, uh, you, you'll recognize him based on the scales. He's one of those dragon fellows. So look, look for a dragon fellow oh, on dragon the beach. Oh, dragonborn. Yes, dragonborn. Thank you. I always always forget these things, you know, but really, who has the time to remember? Um, at the, uh, the Palace of Beauty, a truly beautificious space uh, where our theater and performances happen, an amphitheater the likes of which Faerun has never seen before nor shall again. Uh, you will find one Tyriamir. Uh, Tyriamir is a, um, a rather sharp-witted fellow, a little rough around the edges, uh, but he seems to have magics and power. So that seemed like a good mix to send down there, given how many of the undead there are at the theater. Okay. Only ever one in the seats, but many standing by. It is 
rather unpleasant. I mean, you you bring some friends somewhere, but you can only get one ticket. Like, I understand it. Okay. Standing room only. Oh, yeah, Truly. that's true, too. Yes. Okay. That's, that's so, good. This, I understand the, the, the culture of comedy is alive in Asgard. Aha. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, yeah, two more. At the Silver Lion, one of our finest establishments, where normally I would put you up, but unfortunately, you know, zombies in all the beds. Uh, the Silver Lion is a, a fine establishment that is currently being patronized by the undead. And there you will find uh, one uh, Mel the Cannon. You cannot miss him. He is huge. Is he a cannon? He is not. Okay. He is, I understand, a, a giant. Mm. However, as he describes it, he is, uh, I believe, inflicted with dwarfism amongst the giants. So still tall for me or you, but he seems to think he is quite short. So don't bring it up, and if he says he's short, best to just kind of accept that, because it's true where he comes from, and it's it's how he lives his life. But he's very tall. Look well, for a very tall man. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll look for a dwarf giant. That makes sense to me. Yes, and I understand he got his name uh, from how hard he can hurl rocks. Uh, so so oh, okay. an, an arm like a cannon, not like he doesn't have cannon arms. So that would be amazing, would it not? I mean, it, I, I was expecting it from the name, but I'm glad to hear that there's other information. All what, right. What do you think, Honey Lass? Would I look good with cannon arms? And Honey Lass is just staring at Goblin Jr. He goes, He goes, of course, of course I would. What do I hear? What do I hear from yeah. bird? Yeah, me too. Bird friend. Uh, oh, yeah, you got to speak with the animals. Um, <laughs> this year. <sighs> yes, my lord. Oh. You fucking dog looking at me with your fucking glower. I'm going to peck those eyes. That was what I'm going to do. You, you fucking come in here and you're looking at Honey Lass. I'll fuck you up. Okay, so this is what this Goblin is where Queen's attention is then. Goblin <laughs> Jr. is just sitting there running a, th- like, I was going to say, Goblin Jr. His... and the bird cannot understand each no, other, correct? I know. They both speak their own his li- <laughs> like, just running his lips over his teeth. <laughs> It seems like they might understand each other <laughs> um, in the worst but, way. Butthole's ignoring this completely. Yeah. <laughs> Just be like, all right, so who's the fourth? Yep. There's got one more. Yes, uh, and finally, uh, I have dispatched uh, a bard uh, to the House of Song, one of our uh, finest temples uh, to uh, the uh, the god uh, Milil, uh, who, of course, uh, is uh, the patron of... of Music and and creativity, uh, but uh, uh, Melio is um, not home at the temple at the moment, which would be convenient because a god could probably punch the undead. So I sent a bard, figured song meets song, probably pretty good. Go check it out. Haven't heard from her either. So, what is it that the undead What's... are doing there? Um, the uh, one of the ways the the worship of Melio is presented is through beautiful choral singing. So there have been an, a number of uh, of ardents of the temple who who sing beautiful songs to the the large ringing chimes and bells of, of the temple, and not unlike our theatrical compatriots, they've been stuck hymning their hymns for quite some time. Because if they stop, well, kaboom. The- and the what's, what's this bard's name? Uh, Lexi. Lexi. Yes. I asked her if it was short for anything. She giggled and played a pan flute and then left. <gasps> do you really Gar- Gartok got very excited about pan flute. Gartok, do you like flutes? Oh, Juniper is, is most adept at the pan flute. That's true. Is okay. Juniper your comptroller? <laughs> no. Chief Justice. Ah, sounds like some of her responsibilities fall under the controller's umbrella. But Similar to your, <laughs> to my Proximus. Have you met Proximus? He's very impressive. That's true. Mm-hmm. He is very impressive. He He's is, in that room. but I think that's more of a Reginald of... type situation. You have so many interesting people. I look forward to meeting all of them on an official state visit. Yeah, we'll have to have you over. This will be great. I mean, we, we're kind of in the desert, but there's got to be some. We'll find out if there's some you can hunt in the desert. There's well, probably worms. I don't expect <laughs> Selgaunt level delights but oh, perhaps good. one day oh, I'll, I'll go or, or send one of my lessons i i'm rather comfortable here in any case if you can do this i will be more than happy to write you whatever uh, writ you require um to to show the friendship of uh, selgant to asgard i will say we could use some more friends so could we so yeah i'd say we'll get this we'll get this done we'll probably start at the Silver Lion. People have mentioned it more than anywhere else, and then theoretically we'll have a place to stay if we can clear the zombies out. So that feels like 
at the, the very least, one. we could get a nice beef stew. That's true. I am hungry. You have to deal with the zombies first. They demand all of the beef stew. But yes, yeah. if you can, excellent. Oh. Excellent choice. Oh, we're going to do it. We're, we're, we got this. Right, Minister of Culture? Uh, yep. And he, he walks forward and he gets down on one knee and puts his hands on your shoulder, Quinny, and he says, Save the culture of Selgaunt, Minister. Save all the culture, as is your ministry. Uh, all right. Butthall leans in and puts another hand on your shoulder and says, Do it for peace. And he looks to Gartok like, You got to close this out. Quinny's like shaking his head. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. You don't have to do anything. Do it for the good. Of all of Faerun, we will, your lord, my lord high governor. Uh. And do it for honey lass. <laughs> and Goblin Jr. goes, snarf, which you translate as, this fucking guy. This episode of Dum Dums and Dragons features the voices of Ryan LaPlante at the Ryan LaPlante on Twitter, Tyler Hewitt at Tyler underscore Hewitt on Twitter, Laura Hamstra at EL Hamstring on Twitter, and our DM Tom McGee at McGee TD on Twitter. This episode's sound was edited and mixed by Laura Hamstra, and Dum Dums and Dragons artwork is by Del Borovic, who can be found at delborovic.com. Our theme songs are And Now for That Massive Coronary and Skipping Through the Orchestra Pit Part 1 by Peter Gresser, and our ad music is No Control and Chiefs by Jazzar, J A H Z Z A R all available at freemusicarchive.org. When it comes to Dum Dums and Dice, you can visit our website at dumdumdice.com. Our Twitter and Instagram are at dumdumdice and on Facebook at facebook.com slash dumdumdice. But most importantly, we've got merchandise at redbubble.com slash people slash dumdumdice or you can join our Patreon at patreon.com slash dumdumdice. That's D-U-M-B, D-U-M-B, D-I-C-E. And tune in next week for more Dum Dums and Dragons. Dum Dums and Dice has to give a special thank you to the supreme beings of our Patreon at this time. Christopher Little, George Dolby, Richard Cranium, Gavin and Abby McDonald, Logan, Fire on Friendly, Grandma Likes D&D, Alan, Stabby Stranger, Glitch Trick, Flynn1138, Alorain Okapi, Schrodinger's Pepper, Madre de Gatos, Lady Maiden, Garbo Ape, Locke, Sam Schaefer, Waffle Marie, Dagger Rain, Rob L, Dia De Los Hoodless, Squishy Werewolf, Remy Funky Head, Nomad the Wise Paladin of the Badlands, Accent Therapeutic Services in Florence, Kentucky, Lale, Shulzari, The Long Family, Jordan Oliver, Richard Wright, Brittany Fenwick, Alex Parr, Old Man Mojo, Dragonfly, The Body Barrelers, Megan Werner, a man out of time. Curtis at FingertechRobotics.com. Panda24NN. Shendra D. Your homeboy Bones. The Gata Family. Ellis Hatch. Odigenous. Dan the Welshman. Afflicto Gaming. And Jill and Noel Laplante. If you want your name to be added to this list, you can join our Patreon too at patreon.com slash dumdumdice. Thanks to them, and a little bit of thanks to you.